Hi, this is Stephen from Owner Disown. In this video, I want to showcase the difference between the GTX 1660 Ti and the RGX 2060 Max-Q. I have chosen two similar systems. The 80W GTX 1660 Ti is in the ASUS TUF A15, which I have reviewed. It has the Ryzen 7 4800H CPU, whilst the 65W RGX 2060 Max-Q is in the ASUS Zephyrus G15, and that has the Ryzen 7 4800H S CPU. Now both systems have 16GB of RAM running dual channel. In Apex Legends I tested at high and low settings. In all of the footage the 2060 Max-Q is on the top and the 1660 Ti is at the bottom. And all the footage is at max settings unless otherwise stated. Both laptops are also run using the turbo mode setting. Now ignore the temperature on the G15, its fan air vents are blocked off as discussed in my previous videos. The frame rate very much depends on whether you are inside or outside. And here is the chart with the 1660 Ti in orange and the 2060 Max-Q in blue. And it looks like the 1660 Ti has about a 10% advantage in averages and in minimum frame rates. In Battlefield 5, there is not much between them. I am using the same multiplayer Rotterdam map. And indeed, both laptops pretty much trade blows. Perhaps the minimums are slightly lower on the GTX 1660 Ti, but not by much. Here is Counter-Strike Go using high settings. There isn't a lot between them to be fair, both getting close to 200 FPS. If you decide to lower settings, I did run into an Optimus issue on the A15, where it would try and use the integrated Vega graphics. Hence, my chart just shows high settings and the 1660 Ti held an 8% advantage. In Far Cry 5, I used the inbuilt benchmark and there is not a lot between them at all. It's a shame the G15 doesn't come with a 90W 2060 to differentiate itself more from the 1660 Ti model. And as you can see, there are only a couple of frames between them, perhaps slightly lower minimums on the 1660 Ti, but that's about it. The frame rates in Overwatch does depend upon the map and whether you are indoors or outdoors and also how much action is going on. But I wanted to bring you real life findings. I used fraps to measure the whole match, and if it was best of three over three maps, I used those numbers. On the whole, from medium to ultra, the 1660 Ti and the 2060 Max-Q were similar. Five frames at best between them. At epic settings, the difference was greater, but I suspect this was more down to the situation in the game, rather than the 2060 being weaker. So for me, you know, both are a wash in this game. Now for Rainbow Six Siege, I used the inbuilt benchmark and 100% scaling. My footage on the A15 didn't record, but here is the chart. Again, both are neck and neck, and it's not until quality settings are lowered that we see the 2060 Max-Q pull ahead. But I am aware of that Optimus bug I had, so I think for this one, focus on the ultra and high results. In Red Dead Redemption 2, I also used the inbuilt benchmark, and they are pretty much identical to each other. The RTX 2060 used in the ASUS TUF A15 is the Max-P version and is $200 uh, or 20% more expensive. And expect, you know, about 10% extra performance. So I think the 1660 Ti is very good value. Even at low settings, both were the same, although the minimum on the TUF A15 was considerably lower. Perhaps, you know, that Optimus bug again. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider, using DX12, again using the inbuilt benchmark, the 1660 Ti does hold a steady advantage of about 2 or 3 FPS. Not a lot, but it is certainly there. And indeed, as we lower settings, this still holds true. Not that you would really notice this in-game though. And for Star Wars Battlefront 2, I played a 40-player online map. Both maps were outside, and if you play in an indoor map, you know, expect another 20 FPS or so. There's not a huge difference between the two, and I feel that this is the general trend. I just shot this at older settings, and the 5% difference is negligible really. So, averaging out all of the high and ultra frame rates, both the averages and the minimums, we see literally uh, only 4% swing, which, you know, is margin of error stuff, really. So this concludes that there really is no difference between the 80W 1660 Ti and the 65W 2060 Max-Q. And for me, I think $999 ASUS TUF A15 with that 90W hour battery and the GTX 1660 Ti is much better value for gaming than the $1399 ASUS G15 with the RTX 2060 Max-Q. I'd like to thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!